Sebastian, and today we're going to be talking about adware again. Again? Didn't we do this already? Didn't we deploy an adware server on a local machine um, that blocks uh, all of the uh, local traffic to anything we search on the web? So just to recap, in a previous video, uh, I walked through a deployment via Docker of the PyHole server in which we is um, a proxy, an adware proxy that blocks <coughs> ad messages to whatever you're surfing online. So we notably picked on a few entertainment websites. I have a few more here just to be an equal opportunity offender. You know, we might as well just put them all out there. So. Right now, we have our local adware server deployed via Docker. And let me show you that really quick. Here, I, I ran it before, but I'll run it again. <clears throat> this is uh, the container list, and we can see that I'm running PyHole on my local machine. And that's why this says that. And my DNS, I'm going to get to my DNS in a second because it's a uh, it's a bit of a longer story, and I noticed in the previous video this part, of course, got cut. So um, we're going to go back to that. But here's the offensive TMZ. No ads. Boss of probably the best entertainment website. But I, I'm not promoting. They're not paying me. But they certainly do have a lot of ads here that are not showing up, which is always helpful. New York Times had this big banner. You see it's missing, so I'm just going to refresh to make sure we <clears throat> continue to see that it's missing. MSNBC. So let's make sure we balance out our political views here and look to see what's going on at Fox. Lots of news, but no ads. So our local adware server is running, um, which is great, but it's local. It's not deployed on my network. And that's the reason for this second video. I want this adware server to live on my network. I want my router to distribute this uh, IP via uh, its um, the adware server's IP via its DNS settings and broadcast it to all the devices on my network. I don't want to just run it on this machine. I want to optimize my whole network. So what we're going to be doing most specifically is prototyping on my local machine <clears throat> via Vagrant and VirtualBox an instance that will ultimately run on my Windows server on my network. So hopefully I didn't confuse anyone, but uh, so that's our task. We're going to make this network wide. So I actually have this deployed, one deployed. Um, we're going to tear this one down and rebuild it. But this is the one that's deployed on uh, IP 168. And if I go to my local DNS, this is where things got weird in the last couple of videos, so let me go slow. So I'm going to go here to DNS. What is all of this? Why do I have addresses in here twice? This is clearly manually overridden. What mania is going on here? So my local machine's IP is 114. Sometimes the adware server or during page refreshes will bounce and it will actually hit um, the regular DNS server. This doesn't block ads. So this is my router DNS. This is the pie hole on my local machine. So one way to get to make sure that my local machine stays connected as much as possible to the adware server, I've actually put, put my machine's IP in here twice. So it'll look for it twice, essentially. And this seems to really keep the ads cool down. Now, why is 168 in here twice? Well, because 168 is going to be our new appliance. This is the one that we're uh, actually building and deploying. So 
I put 168 in there. And of course, if you omit this, the last one, which would be the router IP, so this would be your relative router IP. If you omit this and either one of these servers becomes unavailable, you will have no internet. So it is not um, recommended that you leave off the uh, actual router's IP. It is recommended that you put it last. Bury it. Make it look, 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 look for the adware server before it gets to the last one. Um, it doesn't seem to cause much churn. And the added benefit of actually not having all that, the adware traffic, you know, makes up for the fact that this looks weird. At least in my opinion. All right, so that's what's going on with DNS. So once these are deployed, <clears throat> this is also a local DNS change. So I actually edited the DNS here um, to add these, but we can do this on our, we can make it broadcast this address from the router. So ultimately that's what we're going to do. Not in this video, but um, just understand that these DNS servers uh, that are manually added won't be ultimately. Okay. That's that. So how are we going to do this? Well, on my local machine, I have VirtualBox installed. Virtual, um, so VirtualBox will act as my virtualization uh, hypervisor, whatever you want to call it. The actual host, uh, it will turn my local machine into a host for virtual machines. And we're also going to be using Vagrant. What's Vagrant? Or I know what Vagrant is. Somebody is thinking one of the two. The thing is, is that everybody gets this weird with Vagrant. Vagrant is a provisioner. It talks to, natively, it talks to VirtualBox. You can add plugins for it to talk to, say, a cloud infrastructure like AWS or Google Cloud or Azure. And it uh, will talk to things like Hyper-V and VMware. And what it allows you to do is programmatically provision a machine, an instance, or an instance, whichever way you want to call it. This is our Pi-hole server that I created using my program, which I'm going to show you. And it's got 3 gigs of RAM, 4 processors allocated, 32 gigs of video, I'll probably scale that down, and <clears throat> <clears throat> there's its name. So that's the basic idea. So we're going to use Vagrant to create this. It's going to overlay the operating system. And then once the operating system is present, we're going to actually add the Pi hole. We're going to add Docker, the Pi hole um, container, and start it. So let's go over to my Visual Studio code and let's look at some of the code. You know, I'm always amazed when I prepare for these demos. I always leave out the most important thing sometimes, like the Vega file. So I just opened it. Um, why is it all gray? Yeah, it's not being uh, rendered properly. So let's, this file is written in Ruby. So let's change this to Ruby so now we can see it. I'm going to make it a little bigger. All the stuff at the top just has to do with, with plugins and things like that. Um, guest editions, that kind of thing. Not really important. Here's where we define our machine name as a variable. Here's the box that we're using. So with Vagrant, Vagrant uh, reads from um, a host library, uh, oh, sorry, a host repository, a hub, in which folks upload um, full boxes. So an image with uh, Ubuntu 1804. So that's a box. It's an image. It's already prepared. It's already um, uh, in the, um, what am I thinking? What I want to say, it's already in the format so that Vagrant can read it and write to it. So there's a couple of, of things you have to do to an operating system so that Vagrant can ultimately manipulate it. So this has already happened. Somebody else did it. We're not making it. We're using it. So we're downloading this box. It's already downloaded local, locally. 
its name is Shirley Pie Face. So just to clarify, we're going to see in VirtualBox the first name, Pie Hole Adware. That's the Vagrant Box name. But the host name that we'll see on our network is Surly Pieface. I'll explain the name a little later. It has to do with this, with it being, um, it's going to have multiple uses. Suricata is going to be on here. That would be network intrusion. Pi, which is what we're working on right now, are Pi Hole is going to be living near also. And there's um, some other things. But anyway, the name was Surly. Liked it. And that was cool. All right. Move on. So I want to uh, tie this particular instance to an IP. So I have my Vagrant file already configured with an IP to hard code the instance. <clears throat> this bridge connection is specific to a particular computer. My Mac, this is what it's called, on one of my, on my Windows server, it's one of these. Sorry, one of these, one of these three. It has multiple network cards. So when I actually build this and then go to deploy it on my Windows server, one of the changes I will be making is picking an adapter. And um, actually, you know what, we're going to fix this so that when I do do it, I do it correctly. Because this one should have an IP. All right. So when I do go to um, deploy this, <coughs> it's going to uh, be this connection most likely. Because this connection that I just had selected will not work there. The bridge is not called that. It's only called that on my local machine. OK. Some of these other things I'm going to skip. I always like to add a lot and comment out what I don't need. Um, I create files that I like to reuse all the time. This may aggravate people. You might not like all these commented out things in your script. Understood? Understood? This is a preference thing. I like notes. I like comments. I like to figure things out once and then I don't like to go figure it out again. So I put it there once I figure it out and comment it out and when I need it, I'll go back to it. And honestly, this particular version of this file, uh, well, I shouldn't say version, template, this, with different VirtualBox versions, you may have to reorganize some of these things. But with this particular file, I think I've been reusing this since 2015. So told ya. All you have to do is comment stuff in and out, and it becomes a reusable that you don't have to think about much more. Okay. What are we doing? I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So all of this is just making the instance and loading the operating system. Here is where we actually add our Docker and our, um, our AdWare server. So here we go run an update, install some packages. There's a particular curveball with this install. Not so straightforward. Here's the thing. This AdWare server, this Pi Hall, needs port 53 to be open on the local machine for it to actually translate out and grab the traffic and do what it needs to do. Even though it's being deployed via Docker, you cannot change that particular port. I mean, technically, you can change it in the Docker file so that it points to something else, but then it won't work. So, port 53 has to be open on the container and on the local machine. However, Ubuntu 18 and some other distributions has port 53 blocked out the box. So, when you get straight to this point, port 53 is blocked right here blocked. So you can go through all this, you can install your Pi Hole in all this, and you'll, you'll get a nice interface, and you go, wait a minute, why is it not getting any traffic? It has no clients. And it's because port 53, it's hit the port 53 conflict. The container needs port 53 to be open, along with the host machine. So 
this script bypasses it, and you're going to see why. Anyway, to start remediating that problem, Network Manager is installed. So that this particular piece has to do with remediating that port 53 kerfuffle that happens later. Okay, so here we go. All this stuff installs Docker, enables Docker. Yay! And then it does runs this script, fix DNS. What I was talking about. So what is it fixing? Let me save this. <clears throat> so here's fix DNS file. We only have a couple of variables here. The DNS variable, which is my local network's DNS specific to this network. And TZ location. This this particular way is this is time zone location. So that would be America port slash U underscore York. Something like that. Or loss underscore Angeles. So what this does, it goes on your local machine and finds out where you are. You can, you can hard code this in case you're deploying this to some other region, but this will programmatically derive your location. We need to do that because the Docker containers need the right date, time stamp uh, to work properly, and we want to get the proper date, time stamp um, and add it to the container so that all the time stay in sync. Okay. This bash script is written with functions. I like functions. And one of the reasons why I like functions is because it allows you to break up your ideas or, or the functionality of your scripts into pieces that make sense. So something I omitted, when I deploy this script to my network, so this is the local Docker. That's great. I don't care about this one. I'm making this one right now this one when I deploy this I'm I want to keep up with the local statistics on the actual server the stats monitor yes I want a stats monitor that's web based that allows me to see if my server is overtaxed so <clears throat> that's what this is by the way there's other things deployed to the server so that's why you see all this fluctuation and all this stuff. When with Pi-hole and that data installed, which is all we're doing, this barely moves at all. So I don't want you to think that this is a hungry hippo. It really isn't. There's um, an elastic stack that's also deployed here, which I'll be doing in a later video with Suricata and all this other stuff so that we can facilitate not only getting rid of the ads, but so we can get uh, uh, detect and intercept any uh, network intrusion threats. Remediate those, so. but we're not doing that now. But it is running, so that's why this is all over the place. But this is what I want. So we're not just doing pie hole. I'm sorry, we're also gonna do this one. And that's what's in this script. So the first function, we're installing that data. You can go on that data's website. It's all there, it's all here. It's there. The only thing I did was change a port and use a variable. Okay? They hard code it. I didn't. That's pretty much it. So that's net data. So that gives us our stats monitor. I don't know why I installed extra spaces here. Okay. Now let's go back to that DNS kerfuffle. So this fixes the DNS problem and gets rid of the port 53 uh, issue. Great! Wonderful! But wait a minute. Where's Pi-hole? We didn't see, we didn't install Pi-hole yet. We installed a container for net data. We fixed the DNS. We provisioned an instance, you know. But where's Pi-hole? Okay, back to this quirk. All right, due to the fact that we have to um, fix the DNS. The very next thing we have to do is reboot the server for those changes to apply. No, 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 Lori. There's some set of services you can, you know, start and stop and this will work. Good. I'm glad you mentioned it. Please go try. 
Once you figure out what they are, you can let me know. I spent hours on this, and this was the best way to do it. Just reboot the thing, and it comes up. The issue is, is that at this point, again, Piehole is not really installed. We just got rid of the block on port 53. So it's fine. That's why we have this control script. That's what we're looking at. So we stop looking at fixed DNS, and now we're looking at a control script. And a control script is what we're actually going to run Vagrant. It's going to destroy the instance that's there. It's going to bring up a new one. So this is the provision stage. It's going to step through all of these steps. That's what this is. It's going to step through all of those steps. So that's what Vagrant Up is going to do. <clears throat> it's going to SSH in and fix the DNS. Then it's going to reboot the thing. So now that we don't have a blocked up DNS and, and the internet is all back working and everything, now it's going to run another inline vagrant command. So inline vagrant means it's going to go into the vagrant box, find this pihole script, and run it. And pihole script is what actually installs the pihole container on the box and brings it up as running. So here's the pihole script. Again, it's, they all look very similar. Uh, DNS, time zone, we care, it's here, there's time zone. There's this port 53, I told you, it needs port 53. So, port 53 is now fully open. It's now going to install itself. This is pretty much the same script that I used um, for the Docker version that I'm running local. It's not 100%, but it's pretty much the same. And it's, this script only has one function, so that's all it does. Okay, so hopefully we got this. We're going to use our control control script, which is called build pi. It's going to do everything. No, it's not. What? Another caveat? Another? Yes, this is written in functions. What difference does that make? Well, I'm only running one function. What function is that? Build pie face. You see, this can also deploy an elastic stack to this vagrant instance. It can also update Suricata. This ultimately, again, the vision is, is that this one network appliance does it all. It blocks ads, it uh, alerts you with any network intrusion, and it um, remediates network intrusion. So it doesn't just get alerts, but it does something. So blocks, ports, whatever it needs to do. But that's the overall idea. So of this three parts, we're only doing this one, where we get our um, our adware server, our Pi-hole adware server, along with the net data. Okay. So down here, what's this? Last little piece. Did I say last little piece last time? I don't know. Anyway, there is a conditional here. So I want the script to run also at times and just update Suricata at some point. Once it's deployed, I just want it to run an update. I don't want it to tear the whole thing down and put it back. So the way this is written as a conditional. Um, once I run the script, you're going to see me write the word build, and it's going to run through this. So if it sees build as the first value after script is called, it's going to run this. If I don't put anything, then it's just going to run an update. So that's all that means. It's a little switch witchery, but, you know, it works. This can be written better, and probably when I get to Suricata and doing those installs, I'm going to write this a bit better so that it's a bit more even in the way that it's, uh, it's deployed. So not to call, uh, cause any confusion, this is all we're doing. Destroy, up, SSH, fix the DNS, reboot the server, and finish the uh, Pi-hole install. Okay? And fix DNS will install net data. All right. <clears throat> so I think it's some other video I heard a guy say, let's do this. So let's do this. Let me uh, show you. So we're going to use this red one. So we don't need. Let's get it out of the way. 
So we're going to do build, pi, and then build again. So that's this. It's going to only run this function, which is only this. Okay? I have it waiting 10 seconds. Why? Because just in case. Oh, my God, I made a mistake. Mistake. I can kill it. All right. It's just a, a bit of a don't act like a fool. But in case you did, you got 10 seconds to keep the bomb from exploding. So, OK. So the intended effect here, since we already really have these built, it's going to destroy it, and then it's going to recreate it. Let's look at this. I'm going to actually, oh, look, VirtualBox already got rid of Pi Hole. So it already destroyed it. This is um, a different Vagrant um, desktop that I use for um, talking to AWS specifically. So, and this one is going to create the one that we're prototyping for our Windows network. So. Generally, importing a box takes much longer than this. It already lives locally, so it's just really going to call its local version. There we go. It set its name, its vagrant name. Ports is doing all the provisioning. You should see here that the system resources should change. Should be three gigs. Yep, four processors. There's our video memory, 32. Life's good. Okay, so it did the provisioning. So what's it doing now? Let's go to the file. Let's see what it's doing now. It's gonna be here. So we're gonna start seeing software load just SSHing into the local instance, and it's going to start running these inline commands. There it is, running the uh, apt install. <clears throat> the apt update, and then it's going to do the apt install. I just I don't know if I showed this. So it runs apt update first, and then it runs, it installs these packages. So those two ampersands together just... Uh, pretty much links two commands together in one line. So that's Network Manager installing right now. Thank God. So um, a couple of things. Time date control. So that would be the region and all that. This, this is probably something I should control with a variable more so than just hard coding it, but that's what TZ underscore location outputs. America forward slash new underscore York, in my case. So that's that's what it, it, it outputs. Um, the other thing here is that sudo UFW disabled. That is the firewall on Ubuntu. I probably should just have it open the ports that I need smarter but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to wait I'm going to wait until I'm having a day in which I just feel picky about everything and I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say the same thing and then I'm going to do it but not now we're going to leave it alone and <laughs> we're going to be happy that we don't have any issues going on here
believe it's at the point where it's installing Docker. Okay, so it's running fixed DNS right now. It's down, let's, uh, it's here. Looks like it's running this twice. We have to check this. Looks like I have this in here twice. But, um, because it's, it's here, right? And it's here. Yikes, it's twice. I'm going to fix that. But, um, This is what was running. So if we go back over to our servers, I meant to do this. Firehole's not running on 168. It's not there anymore. Neither is NetData. Nothing. The Elk server, all this other stuff that I had running, none of it's running right now. So we should see some of these things come back online. So oh, here we go. That data is back online. However, what's going to happen here is that we're rebooting the box. So a good programmer sets their Docker containers to restart um, after reboot. So let's go here. So you see, we're shutting it down. So here. There we go. Signs to booting. This should be gone. So just to point this out, where are we? We're in this script. This is what's running. This is what just did that. And this is what it did. Reloads. So now it's going to do that. This toilet pie hole. Hurry up. And again, pie hole is a container. It's just going to run this script. Pie hole is a container. And that's it.
So here we go. That data should be up and running. And it is. So this container will uh, come back up to operational on reboot. So you don't have to worry about it. Same thing with Pi-hole. Power goes out, server acts stupid, shuts right off, because the power's out. When the power comes back on, these should come back on as working. Containers, once you start the instance. You can auto start instances also. So um, that's what's going to be set up on the server. If the server should experience a reboot, Vagrant will um, auto start the instance and then the containers would come back online as default. So, okay. Did PyHole install? I think it did. It says it did. It gave a password. Sometimes these passwords don't work. I have to be honest. They really sometimes don't work. Did I leave it here? Let me see. Yes. If the passwords don't work, this is also on the web website. There are some steps you can take to just deactivate it, you know, or reset it to a password that's known. So there you go. Once you do that, then every time you rebuild this instance, it actually uh, reads persistent data and you won't have to do it again. So here's 168. There's no need for any password because I've deactivated it in the past and those files are already there. And here we go. Here's our local uh Here's our local instance of our PyHole server that we will be shipping over to our Windows server to run on the network. So there you go. Okay, well, thank you all. Here's our net data, let's make sure. Okay. Net data, net data. I think net data is beautiful. Lots of information here. Um, okay, well, thank you all for watching. Have a great day.